Hello everyone, hope you're doing alright today. Um, today we're going to be doing um, a bit of a warm up exercise for drawing eyes into our portrait. Um, so today we're going to be learning a little bit about the makeup of the eye and then also drawing some eyes on a large scale. And then hopefully that'll kind of get some little processes thinking in your head and then we'll be drawing our eyes into our portrait next week. Okay, so let's get cracking. You all must forgive me, I've just woken up and my face is really puffy, so be kind to me, okay? So, um, normally I would be continuing with my lovely picture of Issa Rae and drawing her eyes, but when I zoomed in, they were all really pixely, um, so I didn't have enough. Um, so you can do the eyes of the person you're drawing if you want, or you can do what I've did and you've, you can take a picture of your own eyes. Um, and then that's quite that's quite nice because I don't really know what my eyes looked like. Um, so here's the picture I'm going to be working from. Um, so you can get a nice picture of your own eyes like that. Um, my main tips are look at a natural light source because um, then it kind of lights up your face a bit. Um, I used my camera on selfie mode so it was looking at me. I zoomed in a bit to my eyes. And then I didn't look at the screen, I looked at the camera as I was taking it. Um, it's also good to kind of try and keep your face quite relaxed um, because otherwise you get big wide eyes like this. So if you want something that looks really shocked, you can do the big wide eyes, but otherwise just try and relax your face. Um, my main discovery doing this was when I do this, I look like my dad, and when I just relax my face, it looks exactly like my brother's eyes when he was 13, so that's, that's weird, so maybe you'll see some weird family resemblance. Um, yeah, I'm freaked out by how me and my eyes brothers are the same. What? Okay. So you can either use your original picture, take a picture of your own eyes, or have a wee Google, see if you can find something. Um, if you're wanting a real challenge, there's a lot of makeup tutorials have done some really cool eyes and um, so you might want to have a go at some of those because they're pretty trippy and um, I'll post some examples uh, coming up next but they're good if you want something a bit a bit unusual all right so on to the drawing today you're going to need paper pencil rubber so the first thing we're going to talk about is the structure of the eye and where it sits in the face. And um, so the next image I'm going to show you is a diagram of an eye. So if you are a bit squeamish about maybe medical diagrams or if you don't want to think about that today, just maybe skip ahead a wee bit and um, skip ahead to this time on the video. And then it'll all be past it and we'll just be drawing. Alright, so looking at this image here, we're getting a side-on view of the eyeball. And that's to remember that the eye you're drawing is more than what you can see at the front. It's got a whole structure inside your head. It is pretty much spherical. It's not entirely a round ball. Um, you can see here as well how the eyelids fit over the top. And I found that, um, I think it was my like second year art teacher that said this to me but um, he kind of he explained to me how the eyelids sit over the eyeball and over the iris so you can never really see the whole of the coloured bit and um, which is the iris um, and I found that that's really helped me um, with my drawing it also helps me and this is a bit more dark and um, but to imagine so how that eyeball is sitting in the skull ball is sitting in our skull and um, I find it's quite helpful to feel on my own face so if I take my fingers and I can feel here, round the edge of where my the eye socket in my skull is. And then if I kind of come in onto my eye, I can, especially on the lower eyelid, you can feel the base of the ball. And I find that just feeling that for myself helps me imagine it a bit more when I'm drawing and I can imagine a bit more what's happening in somebody's face because I'm quite aware of how the structure of mine works. And um, so if you feel comfortable doing that, do that. Um, if you get a bit freaked out by a squishy eyes, don't do it, that's alright. So 
So I think in our last portrait video we talked about how the space between your eyes is generally the same length as your eye. So we want to divide our paper in three today. Um, so what I've done is I'm using A4 paper and I've drawn round a masking tape. So if you've got a roll of tape anywhere, you can draw three circles like I have. Um, if you don't have that, um, you could just get a ruler and maybe do about 30 centimetres and do 10 centimetres, 10 centimetres, 10 centimetres. That should be about right. Um, I'm working on A4 paper, so if you do have tape, it should be to the right scale for this. But just, you want to have three even spaces. You can eyeball it if you want. Um, so I was using the might be a outer good edge of my masking tape, tape but one. you can also use the inner if you'd like. And then I've just put a big mark so I can see it a bit clearer. If you have gone for the ruler method, method I would recommend drawing some circles rough circles they don't need to be perfect on your last two because this one is this is essentially going to be eye nose eye okay so these rough circles we've drawn um, do represent our eyeball and now we're going to start to think about how and um, we're going to place the eyelids which is the outer lines of your eye or an easier way to put it is where your eyelashes are and um, we're going to place them over our eyeball so you do get some people talking about different eye shapes and um, I'm not super into that because I think it's easier just to look at what people's eyes look like and then then draw them but if it does help you I've drawn a quick diagram of six different types of eye shape and um, people will call them all sorts of different things so I haven't bothered giving them names because uh, a bit like with the face shapes it just gets a bit confusing like is it an inverted almond or downturned so and um, I think it's best to just trust what you're seeing with your eyes uh, but here's a diagram of some eye shapes just so you can see what sort of subtle variations there are so for me drawing the eyelids is almost as important as drawing the inside of the eye because that's what's giving people the real character um, so I would like you to think of these big circles as our eye sockets and into that we're going to be fitting our eyeball and our eyelid. So by the socket I mean all of this bit. So we're going to be fitting in our eye and our eyelid and then whatever this bit is called, upper eyelid, lower brow, I don't know, but those bits. So when I'm doing a large scale drawing of the eyes, um, it's a really good chance to take in all the very small details that maybe you won't do if you're doing a full face portrait. Um, so what I've done is I've drawn a nice line through the middle because this just helps me judge where everything is. Um, and I like to start with the inner and outer corners of the eye. So the inner and outer corners will be on the edges of these balls. Circles. Um, and by drawing the, the, the line, you can see if they all line up. So I've just discovered that my two inner corners are straight. One of them is slightly below that and one of them is slightly up that. Up from that. My words aren't good this morning, but you know what I mean. So you really want to look at the shape of these inner corners. These are also called tear ducts and your outer edges. And just look at, they're generally kind of triangular shape. If they're a bit more rounded or a bit more square or if they point significantly, either way, make sure and get that in. So once you've got your inner and outer eye corners in, it's much easier to join the dots to give the shape of your eyelids. Um, so I'm going to do this off camera because I find it quite hard to get it super accurate on camera, but I'll show you it step by step. So when we're thinking about eyelids, people have lots of different kinds of eyelids. You can have um, eyelids that are quite sunken in, you can have eyelids that are puffing out, you can have them with lots of lines, you can have a monolid where you don't have a crease at all. Um, 
Same goes for underneath the eye, you can have lots of lines here, it can be quite puffy, it can be quite sunken. So just really use those observation skills and really zoom in on what is happening around the eye that you are drawing. So I've started with the lines below my eye and the lines around the corners of my eye, around the tear ducts. And then I move on to the crease above the eye and the lines around the nose and the eye socket. The next bit we're going to look at is the iris, which is the coloured section of the eye. Um, so in my picture, the iris is looking straight forward. You might have one that's looking off in another direction. Um, so then you're just placing the iris in a different section. So as you can see in this first picture, I've drawn in the whole iris as it would be on my eyeball. So I've got a bit below and a bit above. So in reality, you won't actually be able to see those bits. Um, if you've got a whole um, iris, is in the whole coloured bit that's a full circle you can see in the eye that means your eyes can look really shocked or surprised so unless you've got that in your picture you can be missing a little bit of the top and maybe a little bit of the bottom or if they're looking up the way or down the way a, a lot of the top or a lot at the bottom so this is how it should be looking just within the eye now I'm going to put in my one on the other side just to show you how I go about it. So I like to start with the bit that's inner, on the inner bit of the eye because I find that I can look at this shape here, the shape of the white of the eye, and from there I can work out where my eye is and what shape it is using that negative space. So I think mine's a bit like that. You can see quite a lot of the darkness at the bottom of the iris. So that's how I did it. The next section we're going to be doing is our pupil, which is the black bit in the middle of our eye, which is actually a hole. Really weird when you start to think about it like that. Um, so generally when you were drawing, uh, say an eye in school, you just draw a black dot in the middle but now we're all very excellent artists we're going to be doing a wee bit more than that so if you look at this one here I've got my pupil which is really dark but I've also got a big light above it a big highlight because I was looking at the window so if you've taken a picture of your own eye the highlight you have might be slightly different but it's really important to pay attention to what shape that is and if it is coming into your pupil so what I've done is I've sketched in my pupil which is in the center of my eye so it's about here again I'm looking at the window so it's quite small it's quite small because the hole has constricted so it's not letting too much light in to damage the back of my eye if you take in a picture of a dark place your pupil might be bigger to let more light in in mine mine is quite small and then I've got a light up here which is a bit of my window so I'm only colouring half of it. So the inside of my pupil actually looks like that. It's only half a dot. It's not a full dot. Okay, so have a look at the shape of pupil that you've got and sketch in any highlights you've got there. So that's bits of light reflecting off your eye, generally a bit white. So we're really getting there, they're looking more and more like eyes. So now we're going to start adding some details to the inner eye, so that's anything happening inside this bit here. We're not quite on eyelashes yet. So I'm talking about tear ducts and your waterline, which is this bit here that everyone put eyeliner on in the 90s. Okay, so these are some really key details. Are really So your tear duct, we're going to pop in here. So my first one is... Here, so there are slightly different angles for different people. Mine are kind of arching out the way, like that. See those little inner corners? We'll be adding some serious shading to those later. And then the waterline. 
you're going to be using a light sketchy line I'm going to be drawing it in quite thickly just so you can see it better so that's coming along in here and they're not always the same thickness all the way along so make sure you're paying attention to that and tapering them off at the right point and sometimes you can see them going on the upper one that's a bit more unusual there we go see that so I've just got some slight lines yours are going to be lighter than that but I'll show you a close-up picture of that now So now we are on to what I think is the trickiest bit of drawing an eye, which is the eyelashes. Um, I've always struggled to make them look quite natural, but I'm going to show you with you some of the tips that I have picked up over the years. So my tip, first of all, is go and look in the mirror and really look at your own eyelashes. Look at how the top ones compare to the bottom ones. Look at the direction they're going in. How they're growing um, and if you've got some mascara at home um, it's a good idea to go and try it out and just see because I find that by putting on mascara it really helps me understand the way eyelashes go and how we expect them to be and um, because if you think about it when you're when you're doing your makeup you're kind of painting your face already so if you if you've got makeup around give that a go um, I'm including men in that too you can do that too be free you know I'm going to show you a lot of this in you know photo by photo time lapses cause um, it's, they're quite tricky to pick up on the camera and um, so we're going to see what we can do and um, so we're going to start with our lower lashes which are the ones down the bottom and um, they tend to be less thick than your upper lashes but they tend to come round a bit further or you can see more of them and um, they're also a bit spread out and tend to be coming down and out to the way, I'd say out towards your cheek. When I'm drawing the yeah, eyelashes, I like to start with both the it. furthest out and the furthest in. Um, I'm using a very sharp pencil and I'm using it lightly. Um, I would say some of the ones that I've drawn here are still slightly too long and slightly too stiff and straight. So really try and get your hand nice and loose so you can make some nice curved marks that aren't too long. Um, I also like to use markings in the eye to make sure I'm getting the bigger eyelashes in the right places. So I might look at the edge of the iris, the pupil and the other edge of the iris just to make sure that I'm getting them in the right place relative to the rest of the eye. This helps you stay on track with what you're drawing. So the final bit we're going to do today is our upper lashes. These tend to be a bit longer and thicker and because they're coming a bit straight out they tend to all kind of gel together so you're not seeing the individual strokes as much. Um, but I'm going to show you how I try and build them up. Um, I do find this quite difficult. I often find my lines are a bit too straight or a bit too thick. Um, so um, if you find any other tips elsewhere listen to those and Maybe tell me them as well, um, so I can get better. So have a look Again, at this. Again, I like else. to start with the outer and the inner eyelashes. The outer corners are the easiest. My top tip for this is just remember the eyelashes are going out and then up. So if you find yourself just drawing lines up the way, stop and have a think about how they would actually be going on the eye. It's a bit harder because there's more eyelashes overlapping but resist the temptation to go over and over them. Doing them one at a time will look better in the end. So here are our finished eyes. They're looking pretty good, looking pretty similar to mine. I think I've decided that this one is slightly too long um, or maybe should be taller and so they're not dead on but that's one of the things the more you look the more you find things that you're like oh could have done better on that but overall pretty pleased and um, there's always something you can learn more 
So next week we're going to be going into how to shade. So I'm going to be doing one of these shading with regular pencil and I'll be doing the other one with coloured pencil. So next week we'll look at how to really add some life into those eyes. So today's joke is, what did the right eye say to the left eye? It said, between you and me, there's something that smells. Okay, I hope you enjoy doing your drawing. Uh, stay safe, stay chill, try and have a nice day.